Um, just in addition to yesterday's lesson, really, um, just to formally go through the language form and structure and some of the comparison ideals, then you can have this piece of paper completely straight. So just going to turn the camera around, zooming onto it now. Um, so you've already got the context, you've already got the themes written down from last lesson, some of the vocab is important and you've got that. Um, so form and structure, just very quickly. Um, the form of the prelude as 14 books is an epic. Um, that is a type of lengthy narrative poem that's about a journey usually, and Wordsworth's journey is the growth of the poet's mind. Um, so the form is an epic, and it's written in blank verse, that is unrhymed lines of iambic pentameter. The lack of rhyme might represent, it could re represent lots of things actually, but here are some things that you could say. It could represent the way that human power doesn't necessarily unite harmoniously with nature's power, and that the continuous iambic pentameter may represent mankind kind's attempt to impose rigid control or it could arguably arguably illustrate the relentlessness of nature or even the rhythmic heartbeat of the boy palpitating as we explained with the um, annotations before um, with the trochaic replacements of towered up and the spondaic replacement of strode after me um, the Volta structurally is interesting because it divides a narrative into an account of the physical journey and an unsettling summary of the psychological after effects. Um, some other structural devices used, caesura is used with enjambment throughout, forcing pauses. There's a significant where we, um, where we hear that it upreared its head. I struck and struck. Um, this allows the gravity of the moment to sink in and forcing also with the enjambment breathlessness to impart the boy's fearful state where we have some of the longer sentences that are just like um, endless, it seems, and without full stops or terminal punctuation. <clears throat> So quote explosions, I've got here, um, I don't know if you want to do your own ones or choose another part of the poem, but I've got here a huge peak, black and huge, as if with voluntary power instinct upreared its head. I struck and struck again and growing still in stature, the grim shape towered up between me and the stars. Um, and I've just gone a little bit further with my annotations there. And a couple of ideas, this isn't an exhaustive list of comparisons. Um, you could compare it with any of those power of nature poems like exposure storm on the island kamikaze etc um, because there is an exploration of the power of nature and its effects on mankind ozymandias <clears throat> how ephemeral human power is when compared to the majesty of nature's timeless power. London, we can contrast how society and human power corrupts with how nature's power transcends and also the urban versus the natural settings. Um, remains and war photographer, both of these are good comparisons. Um, that is the troubling after effects of the traumatic experiences that they leave an indelible mark on the speakers and poppies, perhaps you could compare compare the departure of youth um, and the confronting loneliness which both poems deal well with so I would expect you to have that if you're going to pause it right there that's good but I would expect your sheet to be completely finished with those kinds of details on thank you very much for your time and see you next lesson